day and we are outside. It is January 31st and frankly, looks like it's going to start raining, but we will do the daily financial news. Anyway, uh, let's talk about what we expect today with Fed Day. Let's talk about jobs. Let's talk about a building, a piece of real estate that crashed 83% from its last sale in 2011. Man, this is kind of crazy. Let's get into it. First, let's talk about the jobs number. My dogs are going crazy with the wind. Uh, let's talk about the jobs number. Again, yesterday we got the JOLTS report. The JOLTS report surprised to the upside. What does that mean? There are more job openings than expected. The JOLTS report came in at roughly 9 million. It was expected to be roughly 8.7. And last, I think, it was 8.6. So again, the job market, at least as far as job openings, is not getting meaningfully worse, is how I would call that. But let's talk about private payroll. Again, private payroll, sometimes called the ADP report, came out today, and it was expected, it was expected to show 145,000 jobs created. Last was 158,000, so there was expected slower job growth. Actual? 107. That is a significant miss to the downside. One of the lowest reports we have undoubtedly had in years. But the big number is tomorrow. The big number is Friday, excuse me. The big number is on Friday. It is going to be the Bureau of Economic Labor, right? I think the expectations last I saw were for 180. Let's see. Uh, I would expect the bond market to drop. Probably the 10 year note should be under 4%, because again, this is. This is really leading the Fed to say, hey, maybe a March rate cut is in order. So let's talk about the Fed. The Fed obviously is releasing three pieces of information today. One is their decision on rates. I think it's a foregone conclusion that they pause. Although Elizabeth Warren wants a cut, some people are still talking about a raise. I think it undoubtedly will be a cut. Then there will be the press release. Again, I've always called the press release a collection of middle ground. It's kind of a nothing burger. I expect the, uh, the announcement to be, hey, we're doing our job. We're encouraged. You know, everything's leaning in the right direction. No decision. Then at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific, Jerome Powell will step in front of a microphone which I think is going to get interesting. He is going to get asked undoubtedly multiple times about rate cuts and timing. He's gonna undoubtedly talk about the job market and softening. He's gonna undoubtedly talk about threading the needle and soft landing. Will Jerome Powell say something like he did last time? Remember last meeting? I think last meeting, he, you know, 12 or 13 days before the last meeting, he said, we're not even thinking about thinking about cutting rates. And then right in the podium, when he was taking questions, he answered the question, yes, we talked about rate cuts. And that is all it took for the market to drop basically 100 basis points. We went from five to the low four. This is That is the meeting that caused mortgage rates to go down. So will Jerome Powell, say something like, yes, we talked about March rate cuts. It is still my expectation, it is still my belief that the Fed understands what happened in the 1960s. They don't want to repeat it. What does that mean for you and me? Basically, I think the Fed goes one more meeting. For example, if a March rate cut made sense, they would wait till May 1st. If a May 1st rate cut made sense, they would wait till June. It is my expectation that the Fed and Jerome Powell does not, does not want to be Arthur Burns. It has been my long held belief that Jerome Powell is playing for his reputation. He's getting old. He wants to be remembered fondly. He wants the history books to recommend him fondly. He does not want to be Arthur Burns. He would much, much rather be Paul Volcker. But you know what? We're going to find out today. We're going to find out today if Jerome Powell lets it slip that a March rate cut is on the table. Because again, the jobs number ADP, it was meaningfully weaker than expected. 
The job market is undoubtedly on a trend negative. We have seen something like 100,000 plus job cuts just in January. It is going to, this will be, in my opinion, this is the first Fed meeting I do not have a great feeling about. For the last year or so, you've heard me on this channel basically call what the Fed did minus one meeting when I think they went too far. There was one meeting, I think it was July of last year, where I said they should pause and they raised. Other than that meeting, we've been, we've been fairly accurate. I'm not sure about this one. This one, this one. this one could have fireworks or frankly be a nothing burger. I just don't know which way it's gonna go. On that end, we have seen mortgage apps. We talked about mortgage applications to purchase up 8% last week, remember that? Well, this week, folks, down 11, down 11. So I have to ask you a question. A lot of you are in the housing market. A lot of you have buy boxes. What is going on in your market? Are we seeing buyer exhaustion? Right? Is demand just drying up? Everybody that's got a house has a house. Maybe, maybe. Are buyers getting frustrated because they're getting outbid? Maybe, maybe. Or is there just no supply and thus no transactions? I don't know. A mortgage app to me though is kind of a, it's a precursor to demand, right? In today's market, you don't write an offer and then get pre-approved. Today, you get pre-approved, then write an offer. So, hey, let me know what you think. Why was purchase apps down 11% week on week? Is it simply rates were up? Maybe. They weren't up meaningfully, but they were up a little. On top of that, we are starting to see, uh, again, I called this year in 2024 the year of acquisitions. Yes, folks, that will also include buyouts. Apparently, a gentleman named Byron Allen has placed a $30 billion, folks, $30 billion dollar bid to buy Paramount. That equates to roughly $14 billion in cash. That's a big check. I guess a wire, let's be clear. Uh, and another $16 million or so in debt. So yes, looks like a lot of media companies might be on the chopping block uh, for acquisitions and the like. Uh, let's talk about consumer confidence. Consumer confidence came out yesterday and it was higher than expected. In fact, consumer confidence is at the highest level since December of 2021. Consumers are feeling better, right? Inflation is coming in. Job market is not crazy, horrible. But again, consumer confidence can change in a heartbeat. Let's talk about some big tech earnings. The Magnificent 7, Microsoft beat top line, beat bottom line. Azure or their cloud growth was more than expected. Google, beat top line, beat bottom line, but ad revenue disappointed. Yes, folks, ad revenue disappointed. Uh, you've undoubtedly seen a video from me and probably other creators about the ad revenue being significantly lower than last year. PayPal is looking to cut 2,500 jobs or 9%. Square is going to be cutting 8% of jobs. Again, this is part of the over 100,000 100, jobs that have been cut just in January. Remember Starbucks? We talked about Starbucks on this channel being a leading indicator for China. Uh, not good. Uh, they missed top line, missed bottom line, and global sales disappointed. AMD beat top line, beat bottom line, but gave weak guidance. They are obviously trying to play catch up to NVIDIA. NVIDIA is, by some estimates, 90% of the AI market for chips. Uh, I do have a question for you. Uh, I am producing longer form content. I want to hear from you. Historically, if you go back and watch my channel with the three amigos, Neon and Matt, we used to do two or three videos, about 15 minutes each. The last couple of weeks, uh, we have done roughly 50 minute conversations. I want to hear from you. Are you liking the longer format? Do you want to go back to the 12 to 14 minutes? I am here for you. Uh, this recommendation obviously came from Graham Stephan, create longer content. So, hey, he is the man, so uh, we're giving it a shot. But I want to ask you, uh, what do you see out there? And then finally, what is this real estate building that collapsed 83%? Well, there is a building in Washington, D.C. referred to as the Xerox building. 
it last sold in 2011 for 145 million. It just retraded. It just retraded at 25 million. 25 million. That's got to be that's got to be teardown value, right? You got to think. Apparently the building is 38% vacant, but hey, $25 million purchase. I got to imagine you could cash flow it even if it's 40% vacant. So folks, at the end of the day, it is Fed Day. Also, it is the end of January. 2024 is one month over. How was January? Was it good? Bad? What do you think? Let me know. Uh, again, if you're interested in uh, real estate investing, we have the How to Get Started One Rental at a Time course, giving away 100 bucks in free goodies. You can get the 10 week replay. You can get buy box. You can get stocks, whatever you want. Uh, at the end of the day, I want you to have an amazing day. Looks like we did complete this before the rain started, so that's cool. All right, guys, take care of yourself. We'll be back in the office tomorrow. Bye.